Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Stage Dynamics. In this video, we're gonna talk about optical parallax. This is another cyclical topic we have in the shooting community where we all kind of understand what it means or no one's really talking about it for a while and then someone will create some kind of controversy or raise an issue about parallax and optics and then it becomes a topic of conversation. So I've been getting a lot of questions about it. And it's something that definitely comes up in classes, especially when we're talking about optics. Because uh, parallax exists in all things, but it's more prevalent, or at least the perception is, it's gonna be more prevalent when we're using uh, red dot sights or even magnified optics. Now, this video is just gonna focus on red dot sights. Well, I'll do another video a little later on magnified optics because there's some slight differences in, in technique and in understanding of concepts and, and what the optic is telling you that you're not necessarily gonna get from a red dot sight. But first, what is parallax? Parallax is, is pretty easy to explain using an example. One of the best examples I've ever heard of parallax. You're sitting in a car in the passenger seat and you're looking at the speedometer that's in front of the driver. The apparent position of the needle, that's parallax. The driver's understanding and position of the needle is going to be different from the passenger's because it's set up for the alignment for the driver. So basically what we have is we have a misalignment based on angle and or distance to the object at which is being viewed. Uh, we use parallax to see. Uh, we got two eyes. Uh, two eyes meet in the middle. Um, and that's why you can have some kind of ocular issues if you've got one object blocking your view of a further away object or vice versa. When you view an object from two different lines of sight, parallax is going to be present. Um, yeah, I'm sure everybody's familiar with uh, sight over bore, optic over bore. That's another type of parallax. The optic sits higher than the bore itself, but they have to meet somewhere in the middle. Uh, before the intersecting point and after the intersecting point, uh, potentially you can have parallax, and the amount of parallax is going to depend on exactly what you're trying to accomplish, uh, being what is your, I guess, uh, desire for accuracy in those two alignments. So when it comes to red dot sights, uh, they work fundamentally differently than iron sights. Parallax is still possible in iron sights as well. Uh, you've got those two different reference points for alignment on iron sights. With the red dot sight, you don't. You have one, which means you line the dot up with what you want to shoot. You focus on your target. And uh, if your dot's in place and your zero is correct and you have a good understanding, you shouldn't have any problem hitting your target. Now. Some optics, uh, actually most red dot optics, claim to be near parallax free. Some even go so far as to say they are parallax free, which is technically impossible, uh, but they use some creative math to kind of get around the concepts uh, that most people would understand as being parallax free. But that's getting really, really, really deep into the scientific understandings, which isn't necessarily a bad thing to learn about, but it's completely academic knowledge. It's not gonna help you shoot better. Uh, it just helps you understand your optics better. So that's something you can definitely read up on your own. And if enough people want it, I can do a video on it as well. What we're gonna look at is how, obviously best, I want to focus my dot within my optical window. But if I don't have my dot focused in my optical window, is any kind of parallax going to be introduced by that? The truth is, if your dot is not close to the same resting position in which it was zeroed on the rifle and roughly the same cheek weld and, and positioning, uh, if your dot's to the extreme left or to the extreme right, is that going to create any kind of accuracy issues? And if it is going to create accuracy issues, are those accuracy issues going to be prevalent enough that in my own practice or in training, I have to take that extra however long amount of time it takes you to correct that position, uh, otherwise you're going to miss whatever shot you're trying to take. The whole purpose of this video is to show you exactly uh, a reasonable and an extreme demonstration of parallax on two very popular red dot optics to see if, um, just in your own personal practice, if you can have knowledgeably kind of accept the fact that if okay, parallax exists, I've seen parallax demonstrated, now I've taken it to the range and kind of shot it for myself, um, now I have a better understanding of the, the, the benefits and the limitations of the optics that I'm using. Now specifically about the red dot sight, your culminator sights. Um, a lot of them quote near parallax free. Like I said, some of them go so far as to say they are parallax free. The way they're doing that, at least most of them are doing it, is they're actually focusing that beam at infinity. Uh, so it does help to avoid some of the culmination issues you're going to have with eye alignment that you wouldn't necessarily get if there was an actual parallax adjustment, if you will, on your red dot sight, which is not something that you commonly see. Of course, the issue with that is any kind of eye movement at inside of infinity distance, if you will, perpendicular or, or at odds with the, the zeroed position of the, the reticle in the red dot sight is going to introduce some parallax into the shooting. And again, the whole purpose of this video is to understand that concept and see if it's actually going to affect in any meaningful way your ability to shoot accurately. 
Now we're gonna focus on two rifle optics because parallax seems to become most prevalent when we talk about rifle optics. Um, we're gonna be using the Aimpoint Comp M5 and the Trigicon MRO, two of the most popular uh, reflex or, or red dot optics that are out there. Um, the rifle platform is, is in unique. Uh, it separates itself very well from the handgun and the fact that we have more points of contact and that consistent cheek weld, if we built consistent cheek weld into our practice, it should, to a large degree, eliminate the possibility of introducing a great deal of parallax into your sight picture beyond what's just gonna inherently exist based on the 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 nature of uh, the mathematical relationship between the optic and the optics at which you're shooting distance, and then of course you gotta factor in ballistics and those things. Uh, but those four points of contact are gonna help us greatly um, in reducing the parallax. But some shooting positions just naturally lend themselves more than others to having parallax forced upon us, if you will. So what we wanna see is, is that going to create some kind of extreme accuracy problem. The easiest way to demonstrate this is just going to be to shoot it. What I'm going to do using both optics, not to compare the two of them, but just to use two different optics instead of just one as my control, uh, is to show you uh, a graphic representation of what happens when I have extreme parallax introduced into the optic in your compass directions, if you will. Um, so I'm going to shoot a control group, uh, or a control shot, if you will, to show where the optic is hitting naturally, and then I'm going to introduce parallax into it. And the way I'm going to do that is by working the optic body against the dot's placement. So the dot is still going to re remain placed on the target, but I'm going to align my eye and, and make any finite control I need to to the rifle in order to stack that dot to the extreme right, extreme left, top, bottom of the optical window. Now we're gonna shoot this from four different distances. We're gonna start out close, your, your relative close engagement. Say, let's, let's just go ahead with five yards. We'll push it back to kind of an intermediate close range, 15, back to 25, and then 50. So on both targets, we did our initial holdover because um, at five meters, parallax exists between the optic and, and the actual bore axis. And then after that, I just stacked extreme right, extreme left, to the bottom, to the top. And as you can see at these close ranges, that even extreme, and I, I really can't understand how extreme that parallax is because of how hard it is for me to actually introduce it into the optic. I had to struggle with my cheek weld to even make my eye align uh, in such an incorrect manner in order to be able to shoot that way. So it was a little exaggerated, if you will. It was the most extreme parallax I could introduce into the optical body um, without tr drifting the dot and completely misaligning my eye with the optic altogether, which obviously would kind of negate the whole purpose of the optic to begin with. But as you can see, on both optics, I was able to maintain roughly the same pattern um, at that distance. Now granted, that's an extreme close distance. So is this going to spread out, and how bad is it going to spread out, or how exaggerated is it going to spread out as we move back to our second, third, fourth distance. So from the 15, uh, unsupported, um, I eliminated the holdover uh, from my initial shot just because once I get back to 15, I generally don't introduce as much holdover uh, as I would closer to five. Uh, but that gives you a good example. Um, the M5 seemed to keep it a little bit tighter. Again, that could be the rifle. They're both uh, 50 yard zero uh, using the same 62 grain ammunition. Um, it could be the optic itself. We're definitely gonna find out. Uh, but as you can see, 
if my point of aim, if my goal was to hit in a group this size, I'm not very far outside of that um, on either optic. And that's at 15. Now let's push it back to 25. Now the optics are apparently starting to stand out from each other. Uh, the Comp M5 is still keeping things really, really tight. And again, this whole video isn't the point of comparison. It's just to show two different examples of near parallax free optics. Um, but you can take from it what you will. The MRO uh, is drifting a little bit more. I think part of that, uh, and of course this is anecdotal, is the size of the window um, on the MRO does lend itself to the dot being a little bit harder to position exactly where I would like it to be uh, based on the fact that I have to force my, my head uh, so far to one direction or the other. So going to the extreme right to shoot the extreme right parallax is pretty easy. Going to the extreme left a little bit harder just because of the natural eye positioning and how my body just doesn't want to work that way and how my eye doesn't want to align that way with the optic itself. But again, four different extreme parallaxes introduced into the optical window and we're still keeping it pretty damn tight. Now let's push it back to 50. Well, this is where things certainly began to spread out a little bit uh, between the two optics. As you can see, the M5 is still keeping it pretty damn tight, whereas the uh, the MRO is throwing them a little bit wider. And again, that could be just the platform going single stage to double stage trigger, uh, comp versus a, or I should say a break versus a flash hider, and all these other potential issues. So it's not a direct comparison because the rifles aren't equal, and I can't really do comparison to my way uh, the way that I'd like to do it without them being mounted on the exact same or very or actually I should say yeah the exact same rifle but uh, the point here is to show that parallax now we're out at 50 um, at least in regards to one of the platforms we're still keeping it relatively tight and this is 50 meters this is a really reasonable distance uh, especially for self-defense purposes for that rifle now, I know I said I was going to do four distances, but I lied. I want to push it out to 100 because I think if I don't, people are going to ask why I didn't. So I'm going to push it out to 100 meters, which is a really, I would say, on the envelope of realistic distances for positive target identification with a non-magnified optic. Again, we can shoot silhouettes out to 300 meters, and that's fine. But can you PID a target at 300 meters outside of a combat environment? with a non-magnified optic? The answer is probably going to be no, uh, all things considered, unless you know there's some red flags like they're shooting at you. Uh, but within the realm of self-defense law enforcement purposes, I'm thinking of what distance, maximum distance, can I get act actual PID on my threat? I'm gonna go back to 100 meters just so it's in the video.
So that was our 100 yards. Uh, I'd say the Comp M5 is, is staying pretty consistent. The MRO less so. The reasons I already talked about. Parallax is something that's going to occur. Um, even when somebody says their optic is near parallax free, um, they're, they're not lying. However, if you're not getting proper eye to optic alignment, you don't have a proper zero, you don't have a proper understanding of your zero, you don't have a proper understanding of the parallax, it's just gonna inherently happen regardless of, of what kind of technology you're using, uh, then you're not gonna be able to shoot as accurately as you want to. Uh, 100 meters, or yards, the MRO was still getting hits. They're not great hits. Now collectively, over the five distances we shot, because I use the exact same uh, point of aim every single time, We've got some really good consistency there with the MRO. Not as much as I would like, uh, but we've already kind of talked about that. Now with the M5, I'm extremely happy with the overall consistency of that optic, pushing back from five to 100. So yes, parallax exists. Um, most of you probably already knew that, some of you have never seen a demonstration like this, or some of you have never kind of experienced it for yourself, or maybe you have and you just, weren't re you just didn't realize that that was what's actually causing your accuracy problem, was just a misalignment of the dot. Generally, our dots just kind of float, uh, our parallax, the parallax that we as humans introduce into the optic is going to roughly bounce in the same 6 to 9 MOA area in the center of our optic body. But we're taking unorthodox position shots if we're shooting from any kind of condition that we're uncomfortable with if there's some kind of clatter on the gun if we're cold if we're con convulsively breathing all these other factors can play into the dot breaking when the shot breaks the dot being placed to the extreme uh, of the optic body now again this was compass directions right left uh, bottom and top now if i were to put it north northwest south southeast Parallax is still gonna exist. It's not just on those four planes. I wanna make sure, uh, four directions. I wanna make sure people understand that. Uh, although I don't think anybody's really gonna have that, that confusion. Nah, I wanna be thorough. So that's parallax on two of the very popular red dot optics that are out there. Does that mean um, that one's better than the other? I'll let you kind of judge that for yourself. I think there's some some designs in the MRO that, that don't lend themselves as well to being as near parallax free as the as the M5. Uh, one of the biggest reasons is just the optical window is smaller. Uh, again, that's a small mitigating factor, but it is a factor that we have to consider. And since this can't, I would not consider this to be a direct side-by-side -side comparison because they're in two totally different rifles. The M5 was on the Lantac Raven, uh, which is a 14.5 pinned. Uh, and then the MRO was on my Sage Edition PWS uh, uh, Mark 115, which is a 14.5 pinned. Uh, barrel length I don't think is going to be a huge factor. They were using the same ammunition, but too many differences to say a direct side-by-side -side comparison. Now, if I were to shoot it on two identical guns, would the results be the same? I don't know, but now I intend to find out. So, I just wanted to put this out there as my understanding of my, the way that I kind of approach parallax. Near parallax free, in RDS, uh, parallax is going to exist, but it's not going to create significant issues in your ability to hit man-sized targets at reasonable distance in self-defense conditions unless you're just not really utilizing any of the fundamentals of shooting. I'm Eric Allen with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.